<laughs> oh, delayed again. I think this happens every, every Wednesday. But nonetheless, hi there. Welcome back again to Cast Iron Wednesday. Once again, uh, where every Wednesday, it seems like uh, YouTube decides to uh, start uh, cooking in cast iron. And I've got no complaints about that. And of course, today isn't just Cast Iron Wednesday. It's also the day before Thanksgiving, so I've no doubt everybody is rushing around or they're already exhausted or they're actually ready and prepared and, uh, well, getting ready for the big day tomorrow. I know we are. Uh, we, In fact, we have two Thanksgivings coming up. Uh, tomorrow, I'm preparing the uh, turkey for my godson, uh, you know, for Mama Bear. And on Friday, my uh, roommate Jamie... Uh, we are holding a, a special Thanksgiving uh, for uh, her son, in fact. So, yeah, and then we're definitely looking forward to all of that. So we've got a lot of prep work going on. <laughs> so, uh, hello, Jessica T. Yeah, I know. Sorry about the little uh, joke there. Okay, so, as, as I mentioned, um, one last thing. Um, we are doing Thanksgiving sides tonight in that I've got two sides. We have two sides that we are uh, going to be preparing. But even so, we are still, of course, open to for people to uh, bring up any cast iron-related subject they want. If you want to talk more about turkeys, feel free. If you want to do the usual frequency ask, ask questions about seasoning cast iron and all that, again, please feel free. Please comment and please also feel free to answer any questions i like this being a two-way chat and having said that first thing i gotta do is uh bring out some cast iron because i've got something in the oven that has to come out right now which means it's time to start being completely amateurish and readjusting the oven for the moment camera, okay, camera. yeah camera see told you i'm amateurish Alright, and what I've been what I've been doing for the past hour have been has been toasting bread so that we can have ourselves a bread stuffing to go into the turkey. And while you can easily do that on a on a uh, sheet pan, of course I had to do it the hard way. Whoops, there we go. And that means we've got ourselves for one is the BSR. Uh, fish fryer, and this is some, and this is some nicely uh, toasted bread too. I like, I like how this turned out. This was, for the record, cut it up into uh, pieces, and then um, drizzled it with olive oil. Oh, this one's even more. <laughs> wow, I think, in, in fact, I think I got it just in time. Drizzled it with olive oil and uh, baked it for an hour at 350, and this is the result. So we're off to a good start here now that, and besides, we also have the oven at 350 already. So because of that, um, Clay Gennard, do you cook your turkeys in something that's cast iron? <laughs> Maybe you've already discussed this. Oh, yes, definitely. I, um, uh, I use old Stumpy, my uh, number 14 BSR, especially for, uh, man, especially for the turkey. He does a lot of things, but he is also the world's greatest turkey roasting pan, or at least I think so. And <clears throat> one second, I'm just bringing the camera a little closer. Okay, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, okay, just enough so that we can, there we go. Yeah, exactly, there we go. Right. See, no problem at all. All right, so what yep. I'm doing is I'm doing like a variation on the sweet potato casserole. Um, this is nice, quick, and easy prep. Um, and so if you don't have time to put together a sweet potato casserole, this is actually a nice, you know, it's a, it, it, it changes it up a little bit. Um, I like doing this. I don't do regular sweet potato casserole anymore because I like doing it this way. Um, so what I do is I take pineapple rings. Now, as you can see here, I line the bottom of the pan with the pineapple rings. And then we'll put those aside for right now. Looking forward to seeing this myself. All right. And from here, what I do is this is a can of sweet potatoes. It's like the big, the big can. And here's some crushed pineapple right here. And what I do is I just kind of drain out the pineapple. Otherwise, the mixture gets a little bit too soupy. And just put those together. Quarter cup of brown sugar. 
I need the masher. The I forgot to grab it. Big masher? No, I'm here. Do you have one in here? What are we looking for? The masher. The, I'll just use this. I was looking for one that, yeah, I don't think you have a huge one. I don't yeah, want I, have, I have a huge one. I don't have a smaller one. All right, so I don't want to use the gigantic masher that has like a three foot hole on it. So I'm just going to use this right here. So whatever works. Um, or you can actually use a, a coffee cup. That works really well too to mash it up. You don't want to mash it up too much. You kind of want to leave it coarse anyways. So, and actually surprisingly enough, this is, this is about all you want to mash it. Okay. Here I'm just going to stir it together. Nice coarse mixture. You can see it's nice and it's actually it's pretty sweet. Um, you can actually omit the brown sugar if you'd like. Yeah, you don't have to add it in. Um, I have a sweet tooth, so I like anything sweet. Um, it's almost like a dessert dish. You actually could probably put this in a pie filling. It probably makes sweet potato pie with, with the pineapple. Probably could. And from here, I like to actually get an ice cream scoop. Literally all the prep it takes. That's it right there. Nice and simple. Mm -hmm. And so you just scoop it over the pineapples, I guess. Yep. Just take a scoop. So essentially what they end up being is individual servings. Nice. So it's easy to serve, easy to make. I, I don't think I'm going to have enough mixture to do all of them. I don't usually do this many. So. It'll work. Yeah, well, I, well just have to, I, I can actually space them out how I plan on it. Actually, from there, I could probably take away from some of it. Yeah, if we all have enough of that money, well, then that's how it is. Yeah. It works out all right, because this is how I usually do it. <laughs> John, I guess we're going to have to eat the extra pineapple pieces. Now, oh, shucks. Such a pity. Such a pity. All right. Let me get Spacey's out a little bit more. All right. All right. So from there, you just want to put them in the oven at bake at 350. Um, like, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Just enough so the mixture is, like, heated through. Because as you know, the canned sweet potato is already cooked. So, like I said, from there, just put them in the oven, bake okay. at 350. For about, there like, we go. Like about, I'd say about 15, 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, depending upon how much you like cooked. Yeah. Um, and then from, and I'll show you guys in 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, from there, I'm going to sprinkle marshmallows on top, melt the marshmallows, and bam, done. Nice, easy variation. Quick, it's simple, so simple. As you saw, it's three ingredients crushed pineapple, well, four, but technically not. Crushed pineapple, those sweet potatoes quarter cup of brown sugar, which you can omit if you'd like to, and the pineapple rings and the marshmallows. That's it. Easy. Simple. Easy. So if you're running out of time, you know, because nothing's ever, last Thanksgiving I had everything out all together, all at one time, which is never, never, not once happened. Have I had all dishes complete at the same time. Really? Yes. When well, you were there. Maybe this out, right? <laughs> Excuse me. Yep. So, but if you're running out of time and you you know things are coming short and we can put it down. You don't have a lot of time to get this this done. Um, the rack's in the wrong one, but yeah, I can move the rack. Okay. Otherwise, the pan is gonna caramelize a little bit too much. Like I was saying, if you if you're running short on time and you run out of time, this is quick and easy, and uh, you don't have to worry about all the work that goes into sweet potato casserole. Not that it takes a bunch of work, anyways. But <laughs> all right. Awesome. Right, so in about 15 minutes, I'll come out and put some marshmallows on them, melt those on, and there we go. Well, thank you very much. Actually, you know what? Should we yes. put the marshmallows on or should we put the mark? Because we're doing it, use it for Friday. Because you um, can't really reheat it with the marshmallows on. Okay, so maybe um, then how about we wait until Friday to put the marshmallows on? Yeah. Okay. So this is actually, we can actually probably take those just right out. Think so? And just bake them on Friday. Okay. All right. Well, if you want to do that, then. Well, or either way, either way is fine. Because either way, now they're going to have to heat up even 
Just click it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about okay. that. All right, leave it. No problem. Anyway, and yeah, that was, uh, well, again, everybody give a hand for uh, Jamie. Yeah, that's called Thanksgiving on the fly is what that's called. Yeah. That's called short order <laughs> Thanksgiving, which is all I do with short order cook. And don't we know it? Yeah. <laughs> it can't be done fast. I'm not interested. Oh, yeah. I love oh. feet. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like the Magnolite pot. Yeah. I've thought, yeah, I've really fallen in love with that uh, Wagner Magnolite there. It's extremely useful. I mean, especially because it, I find it's the world's best water boiler. Um, that was not, oh, that was not funny. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, no, the bit about nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. How did that pie turn out from last week? Oh, yeah, last week. As a matter of fact, uh, the pie turned out great, I'm glad to say. I mean, I can only apologize yet again for all of the uh, delays that happened, and it was not because of the pie, but because I didn't know how to use a food processor. So <laughs> what can I say about that? <laughs> However, despite the delays, the pie turned out terrific. I mean, I mean, I think Jamie ate more than half of it herself, so... Yeah, but hey, there's nothing wrong with that. So <laughs> the recipe for that pie is on my website. You know, I call it, of course, cast iron pumpkin pie. And why not? I mean, if you'd like to try it, feel free. Or because, well, tomorrow is the day for it. <laughs> and you says, great job, Jamie. Thank you very much. So that's Clay Gennard. <laughs> um, what, does, what does cleaning all of your... what? Does cleaning all of your cast iron like the day after? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a fun job, in fact. Uh, I actually made a little project of that, and I've got that written down somewhere. I, I've worked out a routine, especially for cleaning up after, um, after Thanksgiving. And I think I'll tell you once we uh, get started on this, you know, so that I don't just uh, stand around. Uh, but one more that was Clay Gennard. Do you cook your turkeys? Oh, yeah. Like I said, I use Stumpy for that. Um, uh, did you spray the olive oil on the bread or did, or did, like you said, drizzle it? No, that's all I did. All I did was drizzle it on. No big deal. I just spread it out on the uh, pan, just drizzled the olive oil over it and, uh, put it in the oven and baked it for, uh, at, at uh, 350. So, I hope I didn't overbake it a little bit. Uh, I'm sure it'll turn out fine. They're just like croutons now. And having done that, that let's get some more cast iron into the picture here. Because, of course, that's the whole point. This is Cast Iron Wednesday. Just angle this a little. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, what she used was, well, a red and white <laughs> enameled cast iron uh, casserole dish. Uh, yeah, it's China made actually. Yeah, <laughs> but it works fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And now, what you're looking at, folks, is the uh, Lodge cast iron 14 inch wok. Um, back in the 90s, I think they're still doing it. They did the style of uh, pans they called Pro Logic, which had a fancy design. There were no angles on it, everything was curved. And all I know is that this is going to be having its 10th uh, birthday, or at least its 10 year in my kitchen. Um, this coming uh, January. So I've been using this thing almost nonstop for the last 10 years. It is an, it's a massively useful uh, piece of cast iron here. Um, while anybody should, of course, get a cast iron skillet as their first piece of cast iron, I would very much recommend somewhere down the line you look into a cast iron wok. <laughs> okay. Now, what we've got here is, as I mentioned, our other uh, course for tonight. And that is going to be stuffing. Uh, I am here. Yeah, I mean, I know folks love making their um, cornbread stuffing, but I have to admit that I am a uh, born and bred New Englander at heart. And so I grew up on a, the uh, more old fashioned English type of uh, bread stuffing, which is essentially a type of bread pudding. And, um, and as a matter of fact, what we'll be doing here is definitely a unique unique New England style stuffing. I've just put some butter in the pan. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, this particular recipe, I, I came across it actually thanks to Vincent Price. I mean, some of you may have heard 
of uh, Vincent of the fact that uh, Vincent Price was actually a uh, really a gourmet cook as well as a uh, famous horror movie star. He loved cooking, and he made uh, he spent years putting together a cookbook that a lot of people consider one of the great cookbooks of the 20th century, and it is called A Treasury of Great Recipes. I was fortunate enough to find a, a copy of that, and yeah, I fell in love with that. Especially when he, when I looked at his uh, recipes for Thanksgiving turkey and New England bread stuffing. In fact, the recipe, as he says, came from the Wayside Inn of uh, Sudbury, Massachusetts, which happens to be right in the uh, area where I grew up. So there's a lot of nostalgia for me in this dish. Nonetheless, what we've got right now is some butter going on. Uh, in addition to the bread, this is also a meat stuffing. We are using three types of meat in this. Um, so it's definitely uh, quite different from your usual cornbread stuffing. Now, there's nothing wrong with your cornbread stuffing. And I'm sure folks will say, Dad, who needs that bread stuffing when we got cornbread stuffing? It's perfectly fine. Everybody has their own preferences. All I can say is that I really enjoyed this, and I'm glad to make this pretty much every year. So we, that butter melted nice and fast. And having done that, let's see here. Uh, large cast iron butter. Okay, now from here we start adding in some chopped onions and chopped celery. There is There are onions at the bottom of this. The recipe for this again is on my website. Despite the delay tonight, I actually managed to uh, get more prep work done than I usually do in that everything is all prepped. You know, as you can see, everything's all chopped. Even the spices are measured out. <laughs> so usually I end up doing that on cam, but this time we can just get right down to the cooking. And we've got the... Um, and we've got the oven stovetop here set to uh, just about medium heat because really for almost everything when it comes to cooking and cast iron on the stovetop, I rarely see a reason to uh, go much more than medium heat. This is really all that we need, even when it comes to things like searing steaks. And while we're waiting here, uh, what's it say here? Uh, Andrew Bonificio, that was got my 16 pound butterball thawed in the fridge, ready for the morning. Oh, it sounds great. Are you going to brine it? I'm looking forward to that. 1949 butterball in the bridge. Yeah, that's a nice price. Somebody says, oops, my bird is still in the freezer. Okay. Well, if you want to, uh, if you still want to get that bird ready, you can take it out tonight. And, you know, there are some methods for doing a uh, quick thaw. Um, even though some people may not consider it absolutely safe, you know, as you know, one popular method is the trickle method, where you put it in a uh, big pot or fill your sink with water, and um, from there, you just keep a regular, you fill it with cold water, and you keep, uh, uh, you keep water, a little tiny uh, drizzle of water running con so that you uh, have it constantly uh, flowing. When it's done by, oh, if, by doing this overnight, um, with any luck, your uh, turkey should be thawed out enough so that you can uh, either just put it in and get it ready, or if need be, maybe even uh, put it in the oven at like about 250 to 300 for a brief period of time, perhaps, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. Uh, but either way, it's still not quite too late to take out your turkey if you, if you are, have an emergency. Or you could, well, maybe make something other than a turkey. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. You know, you could make a ham. Or I've also recently learned about pernil, which is, of course, um, South American uh, um, roasted pork shoulder. And boy, is that something. If you've never had that, you really need to try that. <laughs> okay, what else do we have here? Yes, Vincent was a cultured man for sure, a gourmand. Yes, indeed, he was. Sudbury is a nice little town, and uh, let it sit, oh, the turkey, let it sit in salt water. If that helps to, if that helps to um, warm it up, then I'd say feel free. <laughs> right now, it's only a matter of uh, getting these, uh, getting these uh, aromatics here, the onions and celery, cooked until they're soft. And then from there, we get to add the meats. We have the meats! In fact, it won't spoil anything if I bring the meats out of the refrigerator. Um, where do we have here? Where did that other one go? 
Okay, why am I missing one? Uh, no need to panic. Let's see here. All right, two of the meats we'll be using. One is breakfast sausage, although, to be honest, this is Italian sausage. We've got maybe about three quarters of a cup of that here. And the other is chopped ham. I have to admit, let's stir this. I have to admit, I went out looking for uh, canned baked, uh, canned cooked ham today. And while they did have the huge hands in a can, they did not have the smaller ones. So I ended up using a substitute. This is spam. <laughs> yes, we're going to be using spam, this stuffing. <laughs> and oh, here's the third one. And the third one, which I haven't opened up yet, is some uh, chunk chicken breast. So we are using a combination of meats here. Sausage, uh, cooked ham, and cooked chicken. And from here, it's really just a matter of throwing it all in. In fact, I think I will turn up the heat a little bit. I'm, it's at about six now on the stove top. Turn it all in until the sausage in particular is nice and cooked. And then once we do that, it'll be time to bring up our spices. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this. <clears throat> Besides, this has a wonderful smell once it's once every all the ingredients are in and it's cooking. So we've got our sausage here. We have our spam. <laughs> spam stuffing. Welcome to YouTube. <laughs> Of course, as you know, on, on the internet, we see more than enough spam, but this is the type of spam, well, at least I like. I hope, I hope other folks do as well. Because of all the butter in here and because of all of the um, uh, vegetables as well, that's why it's not sizzling, but it is cooking. It takes maybe about 20 to 30 minutes or so to get all of this uh, cooked to the point where the sausage is done, because when the sausage is done, and you're pretty much ready to go. And the last ingredient again. I just had it. Oh, there it is. How did I put it back there? Last ingredient. I hope my cats don't come running. I better drain this. And the last ingredient is cooked chicken. I do like making things from scratch, but in a pinch, in some instances, yeah, there's nothing wrong with using some canned ingredients to substitute. I mean, I could have made some uh, pulled chicken easily enough, you know, just uh, throwing some chicken into a Dutch oven for a few hours, but well, had other preps going on, and I was at work today as well, so it's moments like this when canned goods are a convenience, so there's no reason why we can't take advantage of that. Besides, you can still call this from scratch. After all, we are uh, putting the ingredients together bit by bit. <laughs> you know, I saw this video uh, recently of this um, Chinese of this uh, restaurant in Japan, or actually I think it's actually a food factory that really does cook their all of their um, ingredients by hand. I think, it, I think they make either pastry or uh, one of those dishes. But the thing is, is that they throw everything into these gigantic pans. You know, we're talking like huge 200 gallon pots and they throw in the, but they do throw in the ingredients one at a time, gallons and gallons of milk and pepper and all that. And uh, the, it's actually stirred by these huge giant machines. And yet you can still say they make it by hand because, you know, they are putting the ingredients together and they do have people putting the ingredients in. <laughs> so actually, I suppose in a way, when you think of that, when you see on the menu or even on the label, made by hand. Well, welcome to the 21st century. It's all we can do. Well, regardless of whether or not some of the humanity is left, is um, 
taken away by doing by those type of methods, it still is tasty. So really, it's not it's not it's not all bad. I mean, after all, it's an ingenious idea to make a lot of food that they can sell uh, pretty easily and cheaply, and it still tastes good. Okay, what do we have now? Uh, all good suggestions. Run hot water in a sink. Have used hot water to get it going and just left it overnight. Yeah, we just don't want to cook the chicken. Well, I know we've got to thaw it out before we can cook it. So do I see a Wag Wagnerware Magnolite on the front right burner? Yes, you do. Oh, and in fact, uh, on the set, let me uh, do a shot of that, in fact, because it's not just sitting there. Um, I am making turkey broth. Uh, as I mentioned already, Mama Bear's turkey is in the brine right now. I have taken the giblets and I am simmering them tonight to make uh, turkey broth to go, with the, to go with the gravy. And I'm actually going to be using some of that turkey broth too for this here stuffing. So uh, making broth from the giblets is really, really easy and it is one useful use. For the giblets, I mean, nobody, no, a lot of people throw out the giblet bag, and well, if they want to, they can. Um, but as I said, it comes with the turkey, and so all you have to do is just uh, throw it into a uh, pot with some uh, the usual mirepoix, you know, that is uh, carrots, onions, and celery, and uh, you sim you fill it up with the water and simmer it for a couple of hours, and you've got yourself a nice pot of homemade turkey broth which will help make yourself a really great gravy to go with your turkey. Or, as I said, a broth that you can use for anything else, such as making this uh, stuffing here. Got some steam going on, which is good. Um, the, um, well, I mean, I know we have quite a ways to go yet with that sausage, but it doesn't look raw, so I'd say we are making some progress here. Yay for a nice hot cast iron wok. And let's see what else. So anyway, yes, that is a Wagner Ware Magnolite. I uh, love me some Spam sausage, bacon, eggs, and Spam eggs and Spam. Oh, to shush, dear. I'll have your Spam. I love it. I'm having Spam, 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 Big Bean, Spam, 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 and Spam. <laughs> yeah, and Clay Gennard. Yeah, I think I've been a little too long, too uh, a little too time consuming to do the chicken from scratch. And I'm not sure that you have chickens out back. No, definitely not in, in an apartment in the middle of the city. I definitely don't. So. <laughs> <clears throat> so, I mean, we can't do everything from scratch. You know, it's like I can't grind my own flour. <clears throat> I do make a couple of shortcuts though. As, as I've said sometimes before, I make my own vanilla extract, and I highly recommend folks do that because if you do, you will, well, be swimming in it. And rather than paying, like, ten, through the nose $10 or more for a tiny little bottle of vanilla extract, you will have in pretty much infinite supply of what is probably the greatest vanilla extract on the planet. So that I definitely recommend when it comes to doing things from scratch. When I was um, out for Halloween, my uh, friends out there mentioned that they are making their very own homemade Worcestershire sauce. That really turned, uh, that piqued my interest. That is yet another project I have to try. Little things like that is what makes this hobby fun. I mean, there's really an infinite number of things to try when it comes to cooking. So this is why, even though I've been doing this for 10 years, I am still a novice, and I know I will always be a novice. Nonetheless, this is looking pretty good. I'd say, though, because of the sausage, we are still some ways away. Got to be realistic here. You, know, you cannot undercook sausage. But even so... Uh, oh, yeah, and about the bing, 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 as I mentioned, this is definitely my favorite wok spatula. I'm not sure if this is vintage, but it sure looks and feels like it, and it is much lighter than a modern-day wok spatula, so 
I'm very much using this, even though it, even though metal on metal does make a nice dinging. Sanctuary, sanctuary. Don't, don't drop it. <laughs> Uh, Matthew McDonald's. Oh, I guess, um, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if this is a troll or not. Matthew McDonald's. I'll tell you what you can use. Butane bastard gas. I think that's genuine. I'll show that message. Anyway, uh, I love spam with a burn on it with mustard on a Sammy. Oh, yeah. All you got to do is sear some spam, sear yourself some spam and get even a little bit of char on it. <laughs> Hank Hill, I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving, and so do I. Uh, this is very exhausting, yet it's worth it. Well, if it turns out okay and there isn't a lot of family drama, <laughs> then it's definitely worth it. And this year in particular, where, as you know, there has been more than enough drama going around for everyone, I am not going to get into the latest politics that they have about uh, having family gatherings on Thanksgiving. I am not getting into that. Let's discuss that somewhere else. That is not uh, our concern here. We are here for the cooking. And whether or not you are cooking for yourself or for a family gathering, or maybe, you know, just you're, uh, just maybe you're doing what we're doing. Because, you know, I really have not had any, any of those huge family gatherings. I mean, ever, ever since I've been, ever since I've grown up and right now, all of our Thanksgivings have been reasonably small. In that I'm going to visit Mama Bear, her husband, my godson, and uh, her uh, second son. And that's all we'll be. And that's all we'll be there tomorrow. On Friday, as I mentioned, I'm having myself, Jamie, her son, and from what I understand, her son's uh, best friend or BFF. And that's it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Even so, we're still going all out, making ourselves a turkey. <laughs> Oh, yeah. In fact, that was interesting. Uh, that second turkey for Friday, I only got that one last night because we didn't get the idea of having the second Thanksgiving on Friday until yesterday, which means I had to go out and find a turkey at when, you know, only a couple of days before Thanksgiving. And you know what that means? That means that Stop and Shop had their Thanksgiving turkeys super cheap, frozen, like 39 cents a pound. However, all of their turkeys are gigantic. I could not find a turkey smaller than 20 pounds. So I had to get like a 21 pound turkey. <laughs> it's been uh, thawing all night. It's still thawing right now. Should be ready for the, that brine by tomorrow morning. And I'll be doing that before I head out. But yeah, a 21 pound turkey. <laughs> And what's more, that 21-pound turkey cost a total of eight bucks. <laughs> Gotta love Thanksgiving. In fact, in fact, if you have the room for it, as you know, this is the time when you should really get yourself another turkey, a second frozen turkey, and then that way you can thaw that one out a little later when things are less hectic. You could do it, say, any time during the month, during football season, for instance. And then, of course, we've got <clears throat> that other holiday coming, you know, the one... At near the end of December. <laughs> so uh, you could very well get a uh, turkey for that. And what do we have here? But a butane. No, it's a reference to comment above. Oh, okay. Seals are a trash mammal. No politics. Exactly. No politics. Yeah, we're not getting any more into that. But yeah, 20 pounder. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a great deal for a turkey. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yes, the turkey is frozen, and yes, it is not, <clears throat> well, I've given my opinion already about so-called free-range, organic, and other crap like that. <laughs> um, so, because I really could care less about whether a turkey is free-range or organic, and PETA can go and suck an egg, um, because of that, I had no qualms at all getting that frozen turkey for eight bucks. And because of that, we're going to have turkey up the wazoo on Friday. 
On the other hand, that's why I'm also very glad about my turkey recipe in that, in that it can handle a 20-pound uh, turkey. Because, of course, we are making two reasons. We're making it in cast iron. <laughs> and just as important, we are cooking by temperature. I'm going to bring that up again because that is an extremely important tip for anyone who wants a, a, a nice, well-cooked, but not overcooked turkey tomorrow. Cook by temperature. Do not cook by time. I mean, yes, you should estimate the amount of time so that you can prepare for it. But do not... Do not do it by minutes per pound. Use a thermometer. If you have to run out tonight somehow and get a uh, cooking thermometer, I recommend doing so because a cooking thermometer is your best friend on Thanksgiving. With a cooking thermometer, you can use pretty much any recipe you want and you will have yourself a terrific turkey because you will be cooking it to temperature. You will be cooking it until the, until the uh, turkey reaches the right temperature. The sausage is getting closer, I'd say, and the rest of the vegetables are getting caramelized. I think only maybe just another few minutes and we'll be able to move on. So thank you again for waiting on all this. Hmm. Uh, so, so let's get it. What cast iron do you use to cook your turkey? Oh, that's easy. I bring up old Stumpy. I brought him out several times, both in my YouTube videos and here on YouTube Live. So I'm sure uh, you folks are familiar with old Stumpy. Maybe I'll bring him out in a little bit. Stumpy, of course, is my number 14 size, 15 inches in diameter, Birmingham stove and range cast iron skillet. He is a century series skillet, which means he was made somewhere between the uh, 1960s and probably the 1970s. So he's, uh, as, well, there are a lot of pans out there older than him, but yeah, you know, 1950, 1960s to 1970s, that is not new anymore. That is really getting on vintage. And he has cooked a lot of things in my kitchen. I am very proud of old Stumpy, and I do not see, well, there may be only one reason ever where I might end up retiring Stumpy. Well, two, if he ever gets a crack, and I hope he never does. The other is if by some miracle someday I find a Red Mountain number 14 uh, cast iron skillet. Who knows? But until then, Stumpy has had, had a long and prosperous life in my kitchen, and he is going to cook the uh, Thanksgiving turkey tomorrow, and he's going to cook the Thanksgiving turkey on Friday. <laughs> and whatever we, whatever we make on Christmas, we will, he will probably be out then, too. I have made, uh, ch I've made giant cookies in Stumpy. I used him once to make this giant 25-pound apple pie. Um, and, of course, for the, if anybody else has a huge 15-inch cast iron skillet or a number 14, as you know... There are many, many great reasons to use that beast. It is, I really do recommend that folks do look into getting at least one huge cast iron pan because there are a lot of uses for them. If for no other reason, then your friends and family will say, hey, he's the guy who's got that humongous cast iron pan. And then there you go. You'll have more reasons to use it. Family gatherings, church, business, parties, what... Uh, Super Bowl, Sunday, cookouts, whatever you like. Because, yeah, Stumpy's also big enough he would make a, an excellent griddle, too, if we, if we were to take him out into the backyard. Hmm. So that is what I cook my turkey with. Uh, if you look on my uh, YouTube channel, I believe Stumpy has been in every one of my turkey videos. No correction. I, two of them I made turkey in a Dutch oven. But other than that, it's been stumpy. Um, if you want to get a 15-inch cast iron skillet, there are several options, including, well, I would say, first of all, look at TJ Maxx Marshall's Home Goods, because it's possible there may still be out there in there a large 15-inch skillet. And at TJ Maxx, it sells typically for about 40 bucks, which is a very affordable price. Um, 
The other options are other make other modern day cast iron makers. Yes, they're Asian made, but you could still use them if uh, there's no reason not to use Asian cast iron. I mean, unless you have political reasons against it. And if you do, that's your business and not mine. Um, including Camp Chef, Cabela's brands, or even Ozark Trail, the Walmart uh, brand. And yeah, I do know that there is a 15-inch cast iron Ozark Trail at Walmart for less than $20. And if you want to use it, go ahead. It will still make you a terrific turkey. Um, the squash, the, um, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, the sweet potatoes. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, this goes on hold. Time to take out the sweet potatoes. Now, keep in mind that this isn't the finished product. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. But we can always put one on. It only takes a couple more minutes to bake. Okay. It's not going to ruin the other ones. Okay. Okay. Uh, where did you? There we are. Put them both underneath. Oh, right here. Okay. All right. right well, in front of me. That's all right. While you're doing that, I will. Uh... I just want to put the um. Oh, you just want to put it on and then put it back in the oven? That's all I'm gonna do. Yeah. Okay. It only takes a couple minutes, so. Okay. Just Excuse open me. up the oven and. Sorry for getting in front of the camera. You're fine. All right. Does this show on the camera? Yes, it does. Oh, good. Okay. So pretty much, it kind of is a little bit of a pain in the butt to get them to stick. Actually, they're all right. You just got to press them down okay, carefully. Just load it in. Yep, in like just a couple minutes, and this will be finished. It goes off there. So I'm just going to do the one. Just Actually, we'll do one for you too. All right, just as a sample. Yeah, I mean, because we're it's, we're only having a few people over on Friday, so yeah. okay. And these never for people who love sweet potatoes, they look at this and love it. People who are just kind of on the fence about sweet potatoes, they eh, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you've got a sweet tooth, you will love it. Love if it. you're saying there's too much sugar in that, well, then you won't love it. Well, just omit, like I said, just omit the. Uh, All done. Yep. Just emit the brown sugar. Um, and also, um, one thing I do is I squeeze all the juice out of the crushed pineapple um, because otherwise the mixture becomes a little bit too runny because you want it to be able to sit up on the pineapple. Okay. Um, and that takes away a lot of the, the sugar too. And I also drain the sweet potatoes um, a little bit ahead of time. That way they're, you know, they're, they're dried out, I guess, a little bit. Nice. So it's, you're going to end up, so you don't want too soupy of a mixture like you do with sweet potato casserole. It's a lot softer and you know you it's pretty much puree right um with this it's coarse you just like you said like mm -hmm. you saw I just mashed it up a little bit you know put it all it, it's simple yeah simple More it's a sim nice dish to start off with too yes you know, it is. if you don't know how, you know if you're just yeah. if it's your first thanksgiving right you know, it's an easy dish to start off with and right yeah there you go. Oh. okay remind me so that i don't forget to take it out of the oven mm -hmm. All right, that's a great find, man. The older I get, the hat, the heavier my cast iron is getting. Well, there is that problem. Yes, <laughs> uh, Lodge. The maker of my cast iron skillet is something like Lloyd. That's Lodge. I found a Lodge fourteen-inch pan for ten dollars at the thrift store. Yeah, yeah that is, that is, in, that is indeed a find. <laughs> um, um, what are we looking for? Oh, back in the uh, back in here. Okay, yeah. All right, we'll do that. Well, that's what you're doing, right? Well, yes, I am. Okay. There you go. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. We're... Is that good? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me one second. All right, this one is mm -hmm. over the wire. There you go. There's my phone down. Okay. Yeah, the puppy's not here yet. At last. All right. Back to this. And since we've been doing this, this has certainly helped. Cook the sausage. I'd say we're just about done with the sausage at this point. However, before I go any further, I think I'll have to take that um, sweet potatoes out of the oven first. However, this is looking pretty good, and I think it's smelling pretty good, too. It does yeah. even. I haven't even uh, put in the spices yet. All this is is, so you know, three kinds of meat and uh, onion and uh, celery. 
But yeah, I'd say we are probably about as done as we can get on this. So, before we go any further, can we take the potatoes out or would you want to wait? One. one second. Another minute or so. Another minute or so. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to get too involved with this. So, we will hold tight for the moment. And while we're waiting, back to the comments. I'm just here to read the comments. <laughs> well, complain those. Oh, yes. Happy Thanksgiving, Joe. Still annoyed past on the 20-inch. Well, I don't think it would fit in the oven. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of people have that problem in that they uh, splurge on a 20 or even a 22-inch uh, cast iron pan, and then they find it's too big to fit in the oven, in which case then all they can do is use it on the stovetop or on the grill or the like. So, I mean, I've been, yeah, I've been tempted <laughs> to uh, look into a 20-inch. Uh, uh, and if the day comes and I ever find the legendary BSR jumbo skillet, I don't know if I may resist, even though I don't know if a 20-inch pan would fit in my oven. I should probably measure this thing in advance, but not now. It's too hot. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Joe Brown. All right. Shall we uh, check the, um, shall we check the uh, potatoes one more time? I'm usually like them to be a little bit browned up, but that's okay, okay. right now because you better get going yours. Well, how about I turn on the broiler? No. No? No, because marshmallows go like that. Okay. They'll be fine one second. Literally the next second, they're black. Okay. You can't. You can't before. <laughs> yeah, they're just about done. Okay. I like to get them so they're a little bit browned, but um, like they kind of get the heart off and up. But you guys get the idea. Okay. All right. So if you want, we will take them out. I'm going to do that. Oh, here we go. I, I can take that if you want. I got it. Okay. Well, it's already in the middle of it. All right. Want to put some back down? Okay. And while we do that, more <sighs> Yeah, you really, you really want to do it when you're making it. You kind of want to do it so they're browned up on the top. Well, yeah, they we, were close. We will do it right on Friday. We'll take some pictures and send it. Yeah, they were really close too. Spoiler, not even meant. All right. And as always, thank you again for your patience while we are delayed like this. Oh, and let me make sure I've got, we still do. Okay, good. We still have a good connection. Worry that YouTube might have locked up again. But. Well, the pineapple is going to boil down too. Yeah. Yeah, because then you don't get the sugar from the pineapple that, hmm. that uh, ends up browning. And some, you know, brown sugar on a pan is just a pain. Oh, yeah. So put the pineapple right. down just to catch that. Okay, at long last, and at this point, I think the sausage. Oh, yeah, look at this. We are starting to get some crispy stuff. So that definitely means we are we are we can probably say this sausage is uh, ready. <laughs> so that means we've gone this far. Oh, you want a plate? Coming up. The glass one. Here you are. Okay, at long last. Now that we've gotten this far. Okay, because that we've done that, we remove the cooked vegetables and eat into a large metal bowl. Just, so just to show you guys, plated. So it's nice, plated. Nice. Nice single servings. Hmm. Nice and easy. I'll turn this off. Anyone think it's a good idea yet? <laughs> um, uh, give me a second. Let's ch let's check the comments. No, anyone put, uh, comments. Oh yes, yes, no, they are liking it so. Uh, no, it wasn't. I didn't do it. <laughs> no, you didn't. All right. Yeah, sweet potato casserole is one of those things that, to be honest, my family rarely had it. I know in some families it's an essential. My family rarely had it until I was like, grown. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think my stepmom made it the regular way the first time, and then after that, 
um, she kind of made it like this. Right. <laughs> and I just kind of expanded on it. Well, not expanded, I took away from what she did because it was way too much work. Okay. Hmm. And now from here, we've got uh, remove the uh, into a large metal bowl, crack eggs into a separate bowl, and here is where we start mixing the rest of them. Okay, that sounds good. In that case, in that case, it's time. What? Clear out the workspace here a little bit, which means put these aside, put these in the sink. It means it's trying to bring out the other star of these uh, of these uh, YouTube videos. I don't have a name for this. All I do is just call it just what it is: the Pyrex butter print, Amish butter print uh, bowl, which I'm uh, also very happy of using. <laughs> I'm headed to bed. It's 3 a.m. there. Well, good night, Clay. Okay, now from here, it's time to uh, do some mixing. Which means, okay, we, that means now we get to add some eggs. Look at that. I actually did my prep work in advance. How about that? And now we get to... Oops. Prep work or not, I always miss something. There we go. There we go. These are supposed to be lightly beaten eggs, so that shouldn't be too difficult. How is it? I always put the camera, camera angle so that it's exactly the, for my arm to block it. All right, let's try it this way. Yeah, that's a little better. All right, and from here, time to add. Mm, the pineapple softened up perfectly. Oh, sounds good. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, my mind's gone. Mm -hmm. There's one left for you. Hmm. Maybe. Okay. Here. Here, if you're lucky. From here, we have to add about a cup of stock. And now I realize I made a mistake in that the turkey stock is boiling. And if I add that boiling water to these eggs, they will scramble. Well, not unless you temper them. Okay. Yep. All you do to temper eggs is you just pour liquid in slowly, 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 just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit at a time. And you can temper the eggs. Okay. Can we, can we show you? Um, yes, actually. I told you I'm a novice. So... We need to uh, one cup of uh, stock. Mm -hmm. uh, I will get the cup. Or yeah, if you could pass me that cup right there. No, I'm gonna do it in this one, so oh. you can just measure out a cup. Just it's just gonna be a little bit easier. Okay. Well, this two. Actually, you know what? This is fine. You're right here. Okay. All right. Well, again, I appreciate your uh, appreciate your help here. No, no, this is not gonna be a mishap the way last week was, <laughs> folks. Talking to the folks mm -hmm. there. That's great. Um, it's all right if a little gets it, if a seller gets it, Pete, right? Oh, well, yeah, that's true. It's all going in the same place, anyways. Well, it's not actually, but. Um, all right, well. Watch. Sorry. Put it in. Oh, cool. There you go. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. And we have a cup of stock. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're going to put it down. Right. I can't. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I know I should use the other one. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, turkey stock, but still hot, which right. means, as you say, we temper the eggs. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what you do when you need to temper raw eggs is first off, I need a whisk. Coming up. Whisk. Yep. Try to do this left-handed. All right. So when you temper eggs, you want to be stirring. All right. And you just want to pour a little tiny liquid in. A little tiny bit. Stir it. A little tiny bit. Because essentially what you're doing is you're bringing the eggs up to temperature and you're bringing the stock down in temperature. Okay. That so the eggs sense. aren't cooking. 
But if he's correct, if you were just to pour this all in at once, anyway, it would it would cook the egg. So no, I never did go to culinary school. That's why I did not know or did not think of tempering the eggs. Mm, I didn't either. But I grew up. Uh, my sister was a a chef at a restaurant for twenty five years, and I would visit her in the summer. She's older than I am. And from nine years old um, up, I would go in the kitchen and help her out um, starting, at, you know, every day at, at nine. So I learned a lot of stuff, plus cooking at home. Um, when I was in high school, I'd cook dinner two nights a week. Um, you know, it was a way to, you know, my parents teaching me how to, you know, to grow up, I guess. All right, there you go. Definitely sounds like a good way. Non-cooked eggs, hot stock, as you see, it's just tempered. <laughs> There you go. Mm -hmm. Now you just learned something new. Thank you so much. You're so anyway, from there, um, crack eggs in a separate bowl, lightly beat them, stir in the chicken stock, and now finally we get to our spices, which, hey, I've actually managed to uh, measure out in advance. I'm really doing good here. We have some ground sage, ground pepper, thyme, marjoram, and one of my favorite spices and not very often used, mace. Love mace. It's a savory sweet. It's really almost indescribable. Some people say it's similar to nutmeg, but it's not really the same. Either way, mace is definitely something you don't want to pass up. If you don't have some mace and you come across it in a uh, spice store, definitely pick some up and try and find an excuse to use it. You will not regret it. And now that we've done this, all right, add the um, okay, oh, and also one and a half teaspoons of salt. Okay, and then from here, looks like we are about ready to just mix everything together. This is essentially a bread pudding, and now we have made the uh, mixture for it. So now, I get to do a little bit of rearranging here, which means it's time for the walk to, uh, re to relax. He has done his duty. It's time for the walk away. Yes, indeed. Walk, 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 walk. Walk, 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 walk. Time to walk off stage. Yes, walk, walk off stage. Uh, oh, don't you just love all these walk jokes? I know. Walk off is in our attention. No, it doesn't help that much. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm, that was me. Um, okay, that's right. The walk goes away. This year, I drained the sweet potatoes a lot more than, and, the, and the pineapple a lot more than I usually do. Yeah. Then. Um, it's a lot better because it's not as sweet, you know. Nice. I mean, I like it as sweet anyways, but for other people where they don't like it as sweet, like I think your mom commented last year that it could be even a dessert. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I remember that. So. Yeah, so this is a good way. So, as long as you drain out the pineapple and drain out the sweet potatoes a, a good amount because they're both packed with sugar, right? Can't yes. well. Now we get to bring this out. <laughs> Ta -da -um. And what we have here is the Lodge Cast Iron Fish Fryer. This is the newer model that they uh, came out with about uh, two years ago. Um, but the older one probably dated the uh, 1960s or so. And as it mentions, here is where we get our uh, bread cubes, arrange them. And this is a little bit more than half of them. Let me get the other one. We saw these at the beginning of the video. Here again is the BSR fish fryer.
And despite using all this space, this, these things, as they say, are like sponges. They're going to soak up the liquid. So by the time this is done, this is, in fact, I'm wondering now, this pan may be too big. However, I do need all of this room just because it's starting out like this. Oh yeah, these things toasted out nicely. These, for the record, were two loaves of uh, French bread. <coughs> or Italian, I forget which. Okay, now from here, add bread cubes, pour the egg mixture over the bread cubes a little at a time and stir them in. And then after that will be the meat and vegetables. So do this a little bit at a time. Because, of course, we want to coat the bread with this uh, mixture here. Actually, it's working better than you might think. I'm starting to feel it, missed one. Starting to feel it. Five second roll. This certainly beats the stuffing, so to speak, out of stovetop. There we go. Just mix any dry spots in with the wet spots. And notice it is starting to go down in volume because the bread cubes are soaking up the liquid. Here again is where we just need a little patience. Some of these bread cubes are getting wet. Just gonna make sure that they all are. Besides, we're not done yet because to this, we simply mix in our other mixture. And that, of course, would be the meats. Here comes the meats. There we go. This is definitely ensuring there are no dry spots left. It's already starting to look like stuffing, I would say. Just spread it around. Also, you don't need a cast iron pan this big. I did this more for, well, because we're on camera, also for convenience. Uh, what I've also used regularly is the uh, enameled, the large enameled uh, Dutch oven. That's also done a great job. Um, most people make their uh, stuffing in uh, smaller, your typical nine by 13 casserole dish. Looks like there's enough here that you could probably do I don't know if, well, maybe one, maybe one and a half, maybe even two of those uh, regular casseroles of this. Because, yes, I mean, as much as I enjoy my cast iron, I recognize not everybody has one of these pans. And if you want to use a typical casserole dish, go ahead. The important thing is the food and how it tastes. And I, I think this is going to taste terrific and can only hope others agree.
nonetheless, it does look like we've got ourselves a pan full of New England bread stuffing. So from here, well, let me check the comments quickly. I'm baking chocolate, ch pumpkin chocolate chunk bread. Sounds great. Can you give, can you do a giveaway of the scary Arabic writing t-shirt? <laughs> um, it's tempting. Um, let me see. Happy, thank, happy. Um, okay. Oh, I see. Um, somebody is saying 1K subs by the end of 2020. Message deleted by the Google moderator team. So whoever is trying to plug 1K subs by the end of 2020, I'm afraid Google is not allowing it. It's not my choice. It's Google. Uh, that's this is why Melanie Benet fell. Don't don't check them. Didn't check the mutterings of the young kingdom as well. They were also betrayed as well by their emperor Elric. Yeah, Elric of Melanie Benet. That is. Uh, let's see. Microphone is that okay? So anyway, well, bookworm seventy three. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> okay, we are almost done because at this point, and where did the Okay, somebody use the uh, tin foil, Jamie. Hmm, tin foil is supposed to be right here. Uh, Wax the paper. Okay, that means we will have to break out this one. All right. Try to be prepared here. <laughs> Nonetheless, this is all that's left. At this point, we this will go into the oven for 50, 50 minutes. After that, we will uncover it for 10 minutes so that we can, it can, uh, Get a crust on top, and then we will have ourselves some stuffing. Let me just double check the recipe since I have not memorized it. Uh, additional ingredients, stir everything together, cover the Dutch oven, and bake at 350 for 45 to 50 minutes. There we go. All right, that means we're getting down to it. So I appreciate everybody's patience as always. We are running to about that time as it is. Move this out of the way. And into the oven we go. Mm. Boom. And with that, our stuffing is in the oven. So we've done pretty good tonight, thanks to Jamie. We have done some, um, let me move over this way. Hmm. We have done some uh, sweet potato, and I thank her, thank again very much for that as well as uh, what, uh, what we call New England bread stuffing here, which is a little different from your traditional stovetop stuffing. As you can see, it has a lot of meat in it, and it is definitely not cornbread stuffing. As I said, nothing wrong with cornbread stuffing. I would love to see some pictures on the cast iron group of people, uh, cast iron cooking group of people uh, with their cornbread stuffing. Um, because, yeah, I'm, I'm, as a matter of fact, it's something I have not made yet. I will have to do that very soon. Okay. Just clean my glasses. Boy, do things look different. Oh, boy, I know that feeling all too well. <laughs> hmm, no stock? Um, no, we actually yeah, we actually did use the turkey stock, thanks to this. Um, again, let's take one last look at that turkey stock, because I'd say this is about getting ready as well. This, again, is in a Magnolite um, Dutch oven. And we've got some turkey stock here which we will be using, well, what else, on the turkey, or more precisely, with the turkey gravy. Oh, 
And this time we are, well, we are about 20 minutes earlier than we were last week. <laughs> oh, do I see this right? Are there 152 people watching? Well, I'm shocked, actually, and very, very glad. Thank you for everyone. So with that, I'd say we, oh, watching this gives me ideas of what cast iron I can aim to get like a fish fryer. Oh, yeah, there are many kinds. I mean, as I mentioned, we've got the lodge fish fryer. We've got the vintage oval roasters from uh, BSR. Uh, the Asian cast iron makers do make them. Lodge just came out with a new, uh, with two, uh, two new large rectangular cast iron pans. One is, get this, for their first time, Lodge has just released a 9 by 13 cast iron casserole dish. They've also released a cast iron sheet pan or baking pan, which is something like about 15 inches across. May, uh, that might still be even smaller than, this, uh, than their fish fryer, but it's still pretty darn big. So, uh, and of course, even when all else fails, hey, get a big skillet, a 12-inch skillet, or even, let's say, a number 12 or a number 14, because lo and behold, there we might have another use for old Stumpy making some stuffing. All right, so from there, I think, I, I think really, especially again since uh, Thanksgiving is coming, and I'm sure a lot of people probably are already exhausted and might even be going to bed because we all have... A busy day tomorrow. I know I do. I've got to get up tomorrow morning. And let me see. I've got to take one turkey out of the brine, put another turkey into the brine. Then from there, I will be taking that turkey to uh, Mama Bear's so that, uh, and so that we can uh, make that in good old Stumpy for Thanksgiving. And then after that, we'll come home, do some cleaning up, and start preparing for second Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, here we go. Just like that quote from the Lord of the Rings. We've had one Thanksgiving. Yes, what about second Thanksgiving? <laughs> All right. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah, I'd say that's the best thing I could say as well, Anthony Bonificio and everybody. Well, I guess at this point, I can only th thank everybody for showing up. Um, oh, by the way, I know I've been doing a lot of cooking, of course, with Thanksgiving coming on. And two things. One is this coming Sunday... I traditionally do the Thanksgiving, no, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, preparing a Christmas pudding. This time it is going to be a fruitcake. We are going to make a fruitcake here on uh, YouTube Live. Fruitcake by a fruitcake, made by a fruitcake. And the difference is, of course, this is going to be a homemade fruitcake. It's not one of those bricks that they sell at the store. Instead, it's going to be a fruitcake for people who don't like fruitcake. Other than that, of course, December is coming, and we've got a lot of things to prepare for that other holiday coming up. But I am going to be doing uh, some more talk as well about cast iron specifically. I really want to do one of these where I look at things like the history of BSR cast iron, for instance. I do. I mean, that's something, as you know, I've been a big fan of, and I really would like to get that out on a video here. We've got, well, we've got plenty of time since uh, right now, I guess, I'm committed to doing one of these each Wednesday. And I guess all we can do is see what happens next week. So once again, thank you, everybody, for watching. Have a happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. And please say, stay safe. It's been said so many times, but we can only say it again. Please stay safe, regardless of what your plans are, regardless of whether or not you agree with the politics, which I'm not going into. Just stay safe. And with that, I guess we will see you all next Wednesday. Thank you once again for watching, everyone.